talk about um, he and she, mm -hmm. because the the central character. Do we ever? Does anyone ever say her name? No, no, no. She, she. I mean, I guess she has a name. She must have a name. But uh, I decided not to give her a name. Um, when I started working on the book, I, I, I wanted to give her a name, and I, but I couldn't find something that was appropriate for some reason. There was no name. So I started writing the book using she. And she became, you know, in the sound of the prose, I started really liking it. Because it was, it was short, and it was something about it really appealed to me. So I decided just to keep she. And then there was the question of he. And I noticed also that, you know, when women talk about men or boyfriends or husbands, they often say he. You know, like this kind of, have you ever noticed? Mm -hmm, like yeah, some yeah. he that's, you know, you know, they know who they're talking about. So I just found, okay, well, just she and he. I, I, I like the way it was working because it could be anyone in a way. There was a blank face and I could stamp whoever I wanted onto it. Yeah, because after, if, I mean, any name, is going to make you think of someone you know, except if you put some weird, then, n weird name, then it's going to be too weird. So I, I like the idea that you could, she could... And also, in the book, there's a lot about anonymity and, and someone being anonymous, this voice in the station. So the she was a, a way to um, enhance that. He is the object of her desire, and he's almost... He almost just becomes this object he. And you really never get a really great idea of what she sees in him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, he could, he literally could be anybody. Yes, yes. I mean, she, you're right. She, she sees things in him, but it's not, in the book, it's not really explained. But in a way, it's not so important because what I was interested in was much more her, obs her own obsession with this man. And uh, that, in a way, it doesn't matter who it is. You know, in a way, when you fall in love, you don't know who, who the person is, and it's very hard to pinpoint what you like exactly in this person. You know. And he uh, has a girlfriend. Is she living in right from the start? She lives with him. Yes, yeah. from the start. She's his girlfriend, or she's not really his wife, but let's say you know, partner or something like that. And that doesn't deter her. Well, the idea was that she, you know, had this obsessive love for this man, but she has a very hard time thinking about it as a concrete thing, you know, want, trying to make a relationship happen. It's like almost like a, 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 a dream that she pursues, and but she, Ange, who is the name of the, the girlfriend or the partner, is, is she never think about it about her as an obstacle or something because she don't think she can compete with her she doesn't think so yeah so the idea is not it's more between the two of them than with this third person it's definitely I, at first i thought well it's unrequited love and then i i got to thinking it sort of goes into obsession and then almost into pathology after a while Yes, but I think, you know, um, I believe that, you know, love that love can be a very strong bound and, and you know, um, it, it can, in reality, it can create all kinds of things in people that we might want to not think about or we want to, but, uh, you know, if you, when you break up a relationship, it's very, it's very painful. I mean, it ranks among the strongest, you know, uh, trauma or whatever, you know, emotional uh, uh, shock. So I, I also wanted to show that it wasn't something light. For her, it's not light at all, even though other people might think it's totally irrational. And, but it's, it's her life. She announces trains mm -hmm. at what station? Gare du Nord, which is a train station in Paris. I don't know about in France, but here the first words that come out are your attention, please, mm -hmm. or ladies and gentlemen. Right, right. You draw attention to yourself, but she spends most of the book avoiding attention wherever she can. Right, but in her job, she's almost like um, playing a role. And plus, people can't see her. It's just her voice. And really, her voice is the one thing that uh, she's confident in. She's, there's a scene in the book where she says, you know, she's going through... There's a moment where she's going through a hard time, and 
she's a little depressed, but the, her voice is the one thing that cannot be altered, that cannot, that she has to maintain. And, you know, it's just, that's the one thing she's completely confident in. And I, I just like this idea. Is the book a humorous book with black moments, or is it a dark book with light moments? I guess it depends on who reads it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you wrote it. How did you write it? I, I don't. I wrote. I really tried to have both because I, I think that um, as a writer, I, 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 that's what I'm trying to do is mix humor and drama in the same work. And uh, I think because some of the great writers I admire are, have been able to do that, and I think that's that's very good. Then it depends, you know, some people, if uh, some women would say it's a very dramatic book and won't even see the humor in it, or, you know, and uh, others would see the humor first and kind of, so it's, it's good to give a book that can be interpreted differently according to who reads it. But for me, I, it depends, it depends on the moment. Some moments were really hard to write, I mean, dramatically and very um, intense and other I was just making myself laugh so it all you know it depends the book is voiceover I've been speaking with the author Celine Curiel and voiceover published by McCall and Stewart